Well, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We're delighted to have you here for um, a special, uh, somewhat impromptu, but very important presentation by some of the nation's preeminent experts on what I honestly believe is the single most serious threat facing America today, bar none. They know a lot more about it than I do. My name is Frank Gaffney. Uh, my current role is as executive chairman of the Center for Security Policy, which has for a decade or more now been sponsoring a pickup team we call the Secure the Grid Coalition to help the American people understand the threat posed by various techniques, physical sabotage, cyber warfare, or a phenomenon known as electromagnetic pulse, which can be generated by a nuclear weapon, by a local device, or by the sun. And if any of those things are used with forethought and skill against our grid, our electric grid upon which our entire society depends, including the lives of hundreds of millions of Americans, it could be curtains for the United States of America, certainly as we have known it. We're here because, providentially, General Stephen Quast, the commander of the Air Training and Education Command, based out in San Antonio, Texas, has convened this week right here in Montgomery at Maxwell Air Force Base, a conversation with individuals like those you'll be meeting momentarily and many more to discuss a phenomenon he's described as electromagnetic defense, the imperative need for it, and a task force that he's gotten together to try to work that problem. So you'll hear from him again in just a moment, but I want to say thank you to him for giving us the opportunity to have here with us people to address something that was supposed to happen today. I gather that perhaps it's been deferred because we're here, perhaps it's just uh, in the nature of things, but I'm understanding at the moment that tomorrow the Electric Power Research Institute, or EPRI, is going to be releasing what they claim is a scientific study that shorthand is none of these guys know what they're talking about. That there really isn't a problem with the vulnerability of our electric grid specifically to electromagnetic pulse phenomena. We're going to talk a little bit about why that's not so on the basis in part of the past record of this organization, EPRI, which is basically an industry owned and operated think tank, if you will, and in part on the basis of a sneak preview we have had of the study that they are going to be releasing momentarily. And you'll hear about what we know about it so far, what we think of it so far, and why it is so important that these gentlemen and others like them, and ladies too, forgive me, these gentlemen and ladies are attended to if you're looking for the actual facts and true character of the challenge that we're facing to our grid, to our society, and to our people. To lead off, I'm very pleased to say General Quast has taken a break from his duties with the Electromagnetic Defense Task Force to join us and sort of set the scene as he inimitably can do in terms of the challenge that as a military man he sees we're facing and what needs to be done about it. General Stephen Quast. Thank, thank you so very much. Thank you. No, I appreciate you all being here. This, this really is about our president giving us an executive order, asking us to take a look at how we make society resilient. And uh, those of us in uniform understand that our job is to defend our economy, defend our government, and defend our sovereign soil and the American people. In order to do that, though, we have to recognize that we have built Western civilization on the electron and on electricity. And that's been a beautiful thing, and it's lifted billions of people out of poverty across the globe. 
We have to make sure, though, that nobody can use that as a weapon against us. These vulnerabilities, when we first built the electric grid, we never thought about it. So we have brought together all of the great experts of this country. They are here today, and we welcome all thinking, all research on this, and we will allow these experts across society to bring us on a journey of putting together strategies that make us resilient as a society and therefore make our military resilient. Air University here in Montgomery, Alabama has always been the birthplace of great ideas from the theory of how to use the airplane to defend our country to some of the doctrine on nuclear deterrence. So thank you for allowing us to bring the thinkers together and bring you reports where there's no agenda, political or economic, it is great Americans who want to defend Americans, giving you strategies for success. Thank you. Next, I'm very pleased to say we have the former director of Central Intelligence under Bill Clinton. His name is R. James Woolsey. He has had a distinguished record of service both in government and out. Um, he has, among other things, been a leader of this Secure the Grid coalition as the honorary co-chairman of it with former House Speaker Newt Gingrich. Jim Woolsey. Thanks, Frank. This um, situation in which we find ourselves uh, vulnerable, all of us, to attacks upon, tinkering with, other efforts to disrupt our electric grid, some of it perhaps in uh, independently through hacking because the control systems for the grid all run through the internet. All of these create a vulnerability that is extremely serious and extremely concerning to those of us who have had responsibility for national security issues over the years. Part of the problem is that the Defense Department has not been acting well and effectively over the last several years. Some holdovers from the previous administration, some civil servants, others, but they have not been working together with industry to create change. Industry has also not been working effectively and has regarded itself in a way almost as if it were a group of uh, lobbyists uh, uh, for cigarettes in the middle of the argument, the public argument about whether cigarettes cause cancer. We have a bad situation in the U.S. government on this. We have a bad situation in industry. And it's time for Americans to step forward and get the job done in the American fashion. If the government won't do it, if business doesn't see enough of a profit in it to do it, then Americans need to get it done. Thank you. Next up, one of the country's uh, most tenacious students of, analysts of, and practitioners of the business of protecting our country against electromagnetic pulse attacks is Dr. Peter Vincent Pry. Peter has worked as a Central Intelligence Agency analyst where he first began studying and warning about this danger. He's worked on the House Armed Services Committee. He's worked on several congressional commissions, including the Blue Ribbon Commission, specifically tasked by Congress to study and develop plans for dealing with electromagnetic pulse that dates back to 2001. It's really extraordinarily important that he be able to tell you a little bit about this uh, Electric Power Research Institute and its past record, as well as what we understand about the current study. Peter Pry. Thank you, Frank. Uh, first, I want to thank General Quast for organizing this uh, task force to examine and help implement President Trump's executive order that was recently signed on March 26 to protect our nation from the existential threat that is electromagnetic pulse. And it is an existential threat. The EMP Commission and every major U.S. government and Department of Defense study that's been done over the past 50 years has, has concluded it's an existential threat. We are an electronic civilization. We can't survive without electricity. Millions of Americans would die 
if a natural EMP happens or a nuclear EMP attack occurred. And therefore, this study by the Electric Power Research Institute, alleged study, it's really junk science, my friends. That's basically what it is, that denies that the threat would be significant. They claim that it would be no more severe than a local or regional blackout to which they are normally accustomed to dealing. And therefore, that kind of lets them off the hook to having to protect the grid through the technical measures that are envisioned in the president's uh, executive order and that have been recommended by the Congressional EMP Commission. EPRI has a long history of basically denying the EMP threat. There was a time when they claimed the EMP wasn't even real. Then they fought to try to oppose a geomagnetic defense standard for the electric grid. They lost that fight, but they tried to protect, uh, defeat us from trying to get the electric grid protected from the natural EMP from the sun. And now they're trying to basically uh, compel uh, or create a situation where very little will be done with the EMP executive order, which is a unique opportunity for us to protect our nation from a threat that basically could eliminate our civilization because we cannot survive as a civilization without electricity. And uh, uh, the, uh, this, this report, which I've had a, a, a re reviewed, it's nothing new in it. It repeats a lot of the same arguments they've made before. Uh, and it's basically a lot of false science. They make extremely generous assumptions. They have a, a computer model that produces a very rosy outcome, and you can do anything with computer models. You know, and it goes very contrary to every major serious study that has been done by the U.S. government, including the Department of Defense and the EMP Commission. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Following on Dr. Pry, we have another distinguished PhD, man who is well known to many here in Alabama because among other important roles he played was as the director of the Strategic Defense Initiative Organization that um, the folks in Huntsville, especially in this state, um, work, have worked with and contributed to mightily over many years. Um, Dr. Hank Cooper has also served in other capacities, both in uniform of the United States Air Force, as a civilian in the Air Force. He has been working this particular problem of electromagnetic pulse and the threat that it poses to our country and to our people, both in government and now as a private citizen in his native South Carolina, to talk a little bit about his assessment of the science of the real nature of this threat and as to what needs to be done, not just in South Carolina, but across America, I introduce Dr. Hank Cooper. Mr. Ambassador. Well, first of all, I want to say I was introduced to EMP when I was at Bell Laboratories in the early 1960s, and they were the primary science and technology arm of the Huntsville activities on the Nike Hercules and Nike Zeus programs, our first missile defense programs. And we were rudely made aware of it in 1962 with a high altitude burst that also damaged uh, the uh, satellite Telstar, which was our first telecommunication system that I also worked on. And throughout my career, I've been associated with this problem um, in, in worrying about uh, all of nuclear weapons effects out at Kirtland Air Force Base. Uh, where I first met Bill Graham, who chairs the uh, EM, chaired the EMP Commission for 17 or 18 years, and is really a national expert on these matters. There is no question about these matters, uh, the threat being real, uh, and it's silly to even argue that it isn't. What is more depressing to me is that we learned how to deal with this issue a half century ago in the Department of Defense. I personally spent a fair amount of money when I was running the SDI program to have the defense nuclear agents in those days uh, where the, this expertise then resided, unfortunately, quit working on these problems 20 years ago. But uh, that's where it resided, and I put sufficient money there for them to do a red team activity to evaluate what we were actually doing in the design of our missile defense programs. So DOD understood how to deal with the problems. They overclassified it so the information was not available to the power companies. And in my judgment, that is the kind of situation that led to these studies 
uh, which now are not as well informed as was the EMP Commission, which included many aging folk like myself, but who had their hands burned working these real problems back in the days we could do real experiments to understand the threat and what the problems were, and more importantly, how to harden against them. And I can tell you from the work we're doing in South Carolina, it's ridiculous that we're not doing this because the costs are not high. Uh, there may be political issues that are associated with it. There seems always to be political issues if you involve Washington. But uh, this is not a costly matter to protect the American citizenry, and it's a travesty that we're not doing it. It's a travesty that the DOD continues to keep some of this important information secret. And uh, we should get on with doing the right thing with the rest of the enterprise. I believe we can work it from the bottom up as we are in South Carolina, and I hope to export the lessons learned to a number of other places, including Alabama. I'm a Clemson man, I've got to say that. But, but anyway, and they were part of our effort in working the problem down there. But anyway, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Hank alluded to something that I think is important for people to understand as you're weighing the merits of this so-called science, junk science, as Peter has called it. The Defense Department has spent tens, if not hundreds, of billions of dollars over nearly six decades to protect its vital assets against precisely this problem. So it's not likely, it seems to me, having had some experience with people like the general, that that would have been done if there were no problem. And we need to apply the lessons, as Hank has mentioned, um, to fixing the grids as yet uncorrected vulnerabilities. Next up, one of the gentlemen who is in town for this Electromagnetic Defense Task Force, who I've not met before, but I've heard of, I've been acquainted with some of his written works, uh, including the story of survival, is Jonathan Hollerman. Um, he runs a consulting operation called Grid Down Consulting to talk about what the implications would be if we actually found ourselves, God forbid, in a grid down situation. Jonathan. Hi, I'm Jonathan Hollerman. I wrote a book called Survival Theory, uh, and it studies the psychological impact of human desperation and starvation on a society that's woefully unprepared for this very serious grid down threat. Um, it's something that the American people are largely unaware is even a possibility. Every day you flip your light switch, the lights come on. Every day you turn your faucet on, crystal clear, purified water comes out that you can drink. What does society look like after a long-term collapse of our electric grid? And a lot of the ideas and a lot of the plans behind us will focus on the first couple of weeks, but th this is an event that could, it could be over a year. What would you do? Where would you go? How would you live? How would you feed your family? Interstate trucking. Uh, food distribution, heat, AC, everything revolves, everything in our life revolves around electricity today. So it's very important that we are having these types of discussions, these types of conferences. I applaud the gentlemen behind me that are working tirelessly with government and military officials trying to harden the U.S. electric grid. Um, but the American people also need to wake up and realize that until these plans come to fruition, until these types of meetings produce the fruit that were, are needed. Harden the electric grid, that's something that has to happen. Um, the American people need to wake up and at the least understand the threat of what a life without electricity looks like. What does it look like to live without electricity? Where would you go? What would you do? Make a plan of action and, uh, you know, pray for the best. Well, speaking of the American people, um, I'm thrilled that we were able to join forces with a wonderful representative of them. Um, her name is Becky Gerritsen. Uh, many of you are familiar with her from her efforts to uh, represent them in a more official capacity, but she does a wonderful job now as the executive director of the late and much lamented Phyllis Schlafly's terrific Eagle Forum chapter here in Alabama. Uh, she is going to say a few words about what the American people the regular people of this country expect us to be doing about this threat and introduce one of her colleagues, a retired U.S. Coast Guard commander, Teresa Hubbard, to speak as well. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you. Eagle Forum of Alabama is honored to be standing with leaders in the defense community and from the Secure the Grid Coalition who are here today, some of whom have been speakers at our events nationally and in regional conferences in the past. Educating citizens on the vulnerabilities to our critical infrastructure is one of Eagle Forum's priorities. We agree that the scientific data that the threats to our country's energy sector are real and that the grid is in need of hardening. It is the constitutional duty of our government to provide for our common defense, and we applaud President Trump's executive order on coordinating national resilience to electromagnetic pulses. We look forward to working with Alabama's energy sector and government agencies to ensure that our state has a secure grid. I would like to introduce Teresa Hubbard. She's retired U.S. Air, uh, Coast Guard commander, and she is Eagle Forum's counterterrorism chairman. She's gonna say a few words. I have to write down everything because if I don't, I get very long-winded. I'm going to quote Dr. Peter Vincent Pry, who you've heard earlier today. He starts out, I ask the question, what exactly is an EMP type event and why should we be concerned? Dr. Peter Pry explains it this way. He says, this new warfare uses cyber viruses, hacking, physical attacks, non-nuclear EMP weapons, and a nuclear EMP attack against electrical grids and critical infrastructures. It renders modern armies, navies, and air forces obsolete. It paves the way for asymmetric warfare by small nations and terrorist groups. Additionally, there is a naturally occurring phenomenon called geomagnetic disturbance from extreme solar weather or solar superstorms. An EMP type event or a solar superstorm has the capability to instantly destroy America's critical infrastructure, causing a complete blackout of its electrical grid and instantaneously obliterate any equipment that has a microchip in it. These occurrences will cause little physical harm to the population except for those that may have a medical implant but either event will take the 2019 american population instantly back to 1849 living the electricity goes out with no notice the internet is down your car won't start your cell phone doesn't work the tv goes off the radio is out you turn your emergency weather radio on for information and nothing is on the air there's no way to reach out to any state local or federal agency to figure out what is going on are we ready the resounding answer is no. The people are not ready, the government is not ready, and those in charge of our critical infrastructure are not ready. Our elected officials, as well as those in charge of our electrical grids, are aware of the dangers of an EMP type event and have done little to protect our homeland. It only takes five, missing five meals before an individual begins to panic and do things they would not otherwise do because of hunger. Think of the collapse of society all across our land when no resources are coming into a community. No safe drinking water, no medical supplies, no gasoline, no food, no electricity, therefore no heat or air conditioning. We cannot feasibly stop a solar superstorm per se and we will always have enemies that will want to do us harm. But we can harden and protect our infrastructure against such potentially catastrophic events. Every business, utility company, military organization, and government agency are tied to the civilian electrical grid and its internet in some way. We as the electorate must insist that our elected officials, as well as those in government who have the oversight and responsibility to ensure the protection of our electrical grid and critical infrastructure, take this issue seriously and do all they can do to protect the American homeland and its people. Thank you. Finally, our cleanup batter is, uh, again, one of the most distinguished experts in this subject in the country. He runs a terrific resource, the Foundation for Resilient Societies. He has a PhD, uh, excuse me, a, master, a master's of business administration from the Harvard Business School, an undergraduate degree from MIT. He writes brilliantly on this subject. He is again one of the people who is most respected even by people in places like the federal energy regulatory commission uh, under whose saddle he is a prominent burr most of the time because it's not getting the job done on protecting the grid his name is thomas popick please welcome him thank you very much frank for that introduction i would also hasten to add that i proudly served in the u.s air force and so I think it's appropriate that I be here. We've heard from the nation's foremost experts on electromagnetic pulse that this threat is real. And we've also heard that the EMP re 
that the EPRI report, the EPRI report soon to be released, will significantly downplay this threat. So I ask you, how did we get to this point? I have talked to many executives in the electric utility industry, and I know that this industry is filled with patriots who wish the best for our country. However, the electric utility industry has extreme difficulty in getting cost recovery for any kind of security improvements, especially electromagnetic pulse protections. If we're going to solve this puzzle as a nation, we need to make sure that the utilities have the appropriate funding to get the job done, and it will be a small, small investment in comparison to the potential costs should the United States of America experience a catastrophic EMP attack. Thank you, Tom. Let me just say a couple of words in closing. Um, what we are being subjected to this week by the Electric Power Research Institute is, I believe, as these very distinguished experts can attest, misleading at best, dishonest at worst, and a formula for further inaction in dealing with this threat, especially if, as seems absolutely predictable on the basis of the past track record, the electric utilities that underwrite this entity's work, reference was made to the folks who brought you thank you for smoking, it's a similar kind of deal. It is not an independent, objective, and frankly honest arbiter of what the problem is here. But the people who are bringing you this study will be cited, you can be sure, if this evidence that we're laying out for you today is not heeded as evidence that the utilities don't need to worry about this problem, as they do not want to. And for that matter, there will be government bureaucrats who have been working with them over many years to try to ensure that nothing is done about this vulnerability, hard as that is to believe, who will also seize upon this EPRI study and say, well, you see, no, no matter what the president has directed a month ago in terms of the dangers that EMP represents and the necessity of the government pulling together to correct our present vulnerabilities. They will say, we don't need to go along with that. We can continue to at least slow it down, if not sabotage any effort to protect the grid. This must not be allowed to happen. I'm very appreciative that uh, General Quast is not only here, but is working tirelessly to try to make sure that the science drives the kinds of decisions that will be made pursuant to the president's direction. And I just wanted to make sure everyone had a copy. We'll have it up at the securethegrid.com website shortly of a very short critique and analysis of what we know about this study. Uh, by the end of this week, I'm quite certain that the Electromagnetic Defense Task Force will have really wrung it out. And as a result, we'll have an even more authoritative rebuttal to junk science and hopefully a corrective that will enable us to get on with the job of protecting our people.